What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's always a huge, huge thanks for coming back. We really, really appreciate you. Uh, so today I'm super excited about this video because we've got some upgrades for the uh, crew cab that I've been very, very excited to uh, put on. So let me show you what it is. So we got another switch panel from Oxybeam as well as some pretty cool fog lights. Now, these things as you see are full LED uh, projector um, fog lights and they look freaking beautiful. They look amazing. And one thing we're going to do is show you how to wire those things up uh, the easiest way that I found so far. Um, it'll obviously work with this, which this is the easiest way that I found so far. But I'll also kind of show you how to do it uh, if you don't want to buy this whole panel. Um, now, if you watched um, a few months ago, we installed one of these on the single cab. But this is basically the next evolution of that thing. Um, and it's pretty freaking sweet. I'm really excited about it. So this is an RGB 8 gang multifunction switch panel. And I'll pretty much show you what that means. Let's open this thing up. So this is basically the box. You got all of your uh, stickers for your buttons, for all the different things that you might want to do. Now you're not limited, obviously, to these things. You can pretty much control anything that you would need a switch for. Uh, but you'll use this. And big old Oxybeam logo. And this is basically your little control panel. Now the RGB uh, is basically means that you can you can have different colors on this thing. So as you can see in the picture, you've got yellow, green, blue, red. So you can customize it a little bit. Now this is a pretty cool uh, feeling little device right here. I really like it. Uh, really solid. And then. The, this is pretty much the whole heart of the uh, system. I believe this is a solid state relay or something like that. Not very familiar with electrical terms so you guys, you guys might know. But this basically means that you don't need to run actual relays for the stuff that you install. Um, all you have to do is install this under the hood of your truck, run power and ground to it. And when you do your wiring, all you do is uh, choose one of the spots that will work for you, hook up to it right here, and uh, you're, you're good. That's all you have to do. You don't have to uh, run any wires to the inside of your cat, of your truck, install a whole bunch of switches inside. Now, if that's your style, if that's what you like, that's fine. Um, there's actually, I believe there's styles like this with actual switches too. Uh, not from Oxybeam. I believe, but you could get those too. I highly recommend you get something like this, just because I hate having to deal with um, relays and fuses and all that stuff, um, but this is fully included. And you even got extra fuses and a little fuse puller. So uh, this is actually pretty cool. It also comes with a, um, geez, I forgot what the thing's called. A breaker? Yeah, it comes with a breaker with a 60 amp breaker. So pretty cool. And then it obviously comes with like all the hardware and uh, cables and stuff that you'll need to install it. So it's pretty much a full, fully inclusive kit. So yeah, let's go ahead and throw this on the truck. Like I said, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, now one, it has a lot of functions and I'll try and go through it. I believe that you can actually control this with your phone too. I believe there's an app you can download and control it with your phone, which is pretty cool. What we're gonna do right now is choose a spot under the hood so that we can um, mount this box. Don't forget to go and check out my buddy at uh, First Class OBS. Um, if you guys follow him on Instagram, he also has a YouTube channel that I'll link down below. It's the same name, uh, but he has been putting out some great videos. He's got some podcasts, and uh, I might be in it pretty soon, which is pretty exciting. And uh, he also has been putting some, putting out some pretty cool videos. Uh, his latest video that he, that he uploaded yesterday. Um, it was about pretty much how much it'll cost you to do an axle swap. So again, go and follow him. Great dude, good channel. He is gonna start posting more regularly. So go and give him a follow. Okay guys, so after looking under the hood for a little bit to find the perfect spot, I think I got something. Let me show you. So I came over here to the passenger side uh, because that's where the battery on the 460 is. And I found this spot uh, where the jack usually goes. Now, I've never seen an OBS with the, uh, with the OEM jack still in it. So obviously mine didn't have it. The single cab never had it. 
and the uh, the controller comes with uh, some pretty cool brackets but what I decided to use is basically this part of the little bracket that held the jack because it's already there and it's in a perfect spot um, so what I'm going to do is use one of the mounting brackets that came with that thing and we're basically just going to tack it on there like this uh, on whatever spot I find that I like and we'll probably trim it a little bit just so it's not so long and we'll mount the little controller box to it like that little fuse box or whatever and I think that'll work perfectly and again the wiring is super super easy uh, that's why you want to choose a spot close to your battery because all you got to do is run this wire from the controller to your positive obviously with the little breaker in between a round a ground to the chassis which we've got one right here or we could probably use something over here too if i needed to but i'll probably just go to this one if it reaches and ah shit you know one more thing that we need i'm gonna have to run a wire all the way across to my fuse box because i believe that we need a uh, switch uh switch power wire all the way over there which is no big deal i'll just run it up to there okay guys so we've got the uh kind of location everything mocked up and tacked and i kind of brought it just to make sure that everything was going to work and it is looking pretty good so i went ahead and i took to uh i went ahead and i tacked this thing in one spot just in case it didn't work i could easily break it off but it looks like it's gonna be pretty perfect um and the way that i'm gonna mount this thing is basically all the way up on that slot all the way up like that and basically the way it'll clear this motor for the uh for the blower so i think we'll be good i like it so i'm gonna go ahead and take it off one more time and throw a few more tacks on it this thing's actually like super super solid like that's just with one tack and it's not fully tight so I'm pretty happy with this location okay so i've got this thing tacked up i've got it uh i threw some flat black paint on it and i've got it drying right now so while that dries you know i just realized that i messed up i was supposed to trim that thing up oops ah anyways <laughs> don't rush a job because this will always happen but anyways um what i'm gonna do now i'm still gonna let it dry a little bit because i don't want to mess with wet paint but what we're gonna do is figure out a spot for the actual control panel and let me go grab it okay guys so like i said in that last clip uh this this little harness for the control box for the control panel for this deal is just a little bit too short to mount that where we want it so what i decided to do is to extend it so i'm gonna go ahead and um strip this wire back a little bit more and i got <clears throat> and i got a couple wires right here that we're gonna use to basically splice here in the middle and extend this uh, pretty much as far as we need to um probably not the ideal thing to do but i really want to mount that little control panel up there i think it's gonna look pretty cool so so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and start stripping this stuff and extending it and basically the way that i'm gonna do it is i'm gonna uh, solder these cables to this side first and then just leave the uh this side random that way once we run it and have it to where we want it to have it uh, then i'll go ahead and splice this connector back in and plug it in to the uh little fuse box under the hood okay guys so i've got our wiring harness extended and um i probably did it a little bit too long but i'd rather have a little bit extra that i can shorten than not have enough but basically this is what i did uh well you're not really gonna be able to see but i right here i spliced into every one of the wires uh a new wire and then as i was doing them i was labeling them just to make sure that whatever wire i spliced onto here will be the same once i splice the connector back into this thing and one thing i forgot to do is heat shrink this end so i'm gonna do that real quick before i finish and then i did use this really nice uh braided loom i really like this stuff it's super easy to work with oh and by the way um if you do this if you mount it like the way that i did, did on the single cab uh you don't have to extend any of these wires on the single cab i mounted it right here to this cubby uh yeah right there and i kind of ran all the wires through the back of the cab through the firewall so i went through that little hole in the ground the um 
firewall that the gas engines would use for the throttle pedal. I went over the uh, brake booster and then I mounted my little box right here. As you can see, it's a little bit of a different design um, from that other one. But I mean, there was more than enough uh, cable if you run it this way on a 7.3. There's actually some extra cable. Um, but yeah, like I said, I wanted to mount it on on the crew cab. I really wanted to mount it over there to get rid of those switches. And then the battery is all the way over there, so it's a little bit of a longer run. So that's why we had to extend it on this harness. Okay, guys. So as you might be able to see, we've got the wire hanging through here, and as you saw, as you can see, I had to take that um, wood thing out as well as my uh, windshield visor to lower the uh, the headliner just enough so that I can snake this thing through. And um, as soon as I took the switches and the wires out, I realized that I had messed up um, because I probably should have left at least one wire in there. That way, I could have used it as a fish wire and just uh, taped it to this end and pulled it through without having to uh do all this mess but it's okay because i took the time while this thing was down i'm actually painting it black um i'm not sure how it's gonna end up or how it's gonna look but i think it'll look better than the wood color i really really hate the wood color uh, on this truck and not that i don't like wood color like i love the eddie bauer trucks i love that like wood stuff and i know that it's fake wood but i like that color I, I hate the way that they do the Centurions with all that like really chunky wood, you know, and like that very like bright wood. Um, so yeah, I just decided to paint it black and see how it looks. If it doesn't look good, I still have plans to replace this with some sort of other um, overhead console. So we'll see further in the future. But now that we have this thing through on this side, I'm gonna go ahead, throw the visor on, get all the secure, all the wires ran down the A pillar and we'll go ahead and see how I can fish them through the firewall and make our connection at the uh, little control fuse relay box under the hood. Oh, and just in case you're wondering how to take off all of the stuff, it's super easy. Everything is just a whole bunch of uh, Phillips uh, screws. On the visor on this side, you'll have one screw on the back of it. On the A-pillar side, you'll have three screws and that just comes right off. This little metal piece has uh, just Phillips screws running all the way through it. It goes under the A pillar and yeah, super easy. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff secured. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lower, um, instead of having this cable go through this trim piece uh, because it's metal, I'm actually gonna go up and under here where it's plastic. I think it'll have a better chance of not getting frayed or cut uh, because of this metal piece even though it's uh, it's a soft roll piece I feel better if it goes down through the plastic and then down that way okay guys so I want to show you the uh, mounting plate which is this thing and basically what I did is I took um, obviously the plant mounting plate that was already on the truck I took out those switches and on the back of the uh, little uh, control board you've got a few different mounting uh, locations so what I did is I centered up all of these measurements on this plate and then transferred these measurements to it <clears throat> and basically basically just drill them out and then countersunk them a little bit that way these countersink little bolts will fit in there flush and it shouldn't interfere with the uh, little console that i have on the truck so i'm gonna go ahead get all of this put together throw it on the truck and show you basically the finished interior of the truck which i already kind of test fit it and it looks freaking amazing so i'm gonna go ahead and get that knocked out Okay guys, so I just fin finished installing the uh, little control panel inside of the cab and uh, I'm really happy with this. So let me show it to you guys. The light isn't the best, so I don't know how this is going to turn out. But me sitting here and looking at it, I actually like it. And it turned that little console that it had uh, from something that I hated to something that I actually really like now. So let me show you. So this is what it turned out like. Like I said, the light isn't the best right now, but it looks amazing. Like, I really like the way that it looks. And like, it's, it's super easy to reach. Like, you know, I can easily get to all the buttons. Uh, and talking about the buttons, um, they, don't, they don't send you enough of these blanks 
to fill out this whole thing except one so i had to kind of do some stuff that i plan on doing later like backup lights and cargo lights and stuff like that um so that's one thing that i wish that they sent seven other blanks uh but yeah again i really like the way that this thing turned out super happy with it but we can't spend too much time looking at this thing and admiring it because we gotta finish the wiring so let me show you that side of uh things under the hood oh and then while i was at it i went ahead and routed my little microphone to the a pillar i just gotta uh stick it in place right there so i don't know if i mentioned this but we routed the uh that one cable through the headliner down the a pillar through the firewall and and that thing basically came out through this grommet that was already in the firewall so i went from there over the booster across the firewall Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys are wondering, this is how far the stock uh, harness got me. From here on is the part that I spliced on. And basically right here, I'm gonna have to cut these cables right here and then splice back this connector. I also got my little uh, switch assembly uh, installed already in my in my uh, fender well. So like, again, I, like I said, I used this um, jack bracket. I tack welded the bracket that came with the switch panel thing and it's it's in there solid and like you see we've got all of our fuses that we can tap into like i said we're gonna go ahead and tap that little connector so we can plug it in here and basically have the wiring for the switch uh, panel finally done and we'll move on to the fog lights which hopefully that'll go by a little bit faster okay guys so we've got the switch panel completely wired up installed finished and working but i'll show you that in a little bit what i want to show you right now is the fog lights so as you can see hopefully maybe we've got a new fog light in and it looks beautiful that thing is i love it it looks beautiful it looks so good so i'm gonna show you on this end how to do it and uh as you can see i'm a little bit low on my fog light fog, fog light fluid so good thing that we're changing it anyways <laughs> hopefully it don't look too bad but all you need is i like a short phillips screwdriver and some sort of prying tool the first thing you gotta do is remove that phillips from the back of the fog light so i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now so now that we've got that phillips screw we're gonna take our prying tool and uh make sure you knock a whole bunch of dirt in your eyes that always helps but we're basically it might be a little bit hard to see but see these little little like i'm trying to fix it for you guys maybe that's a little bit better you see these little ears right here? These things basically retain uh, your fog lights on either side. So all you gotta do is lift up on them a little bit and push the fog light out. Um, again, it's super easy. Like I said, it's basically just a clip. That you gotta lift up on some, and as you lift up, you gotta push on the fog light. So it's kinda hard to do with uh, one hand. So I'm gonna go ahead, get it thrown, get it out, and put the new ones in. And just like that, we've got our fog light out. And it's full of water. Uh, the reason it's full of water is because I didn't have the plug in. So the other day when I was driving in the rain, it got full of water. So now when it comes to the new ones, um, there's a couple things. Well, there's actually just one thing you gotta do. Um, on the package, it comes with this hardware bag. And basically the only thing you gotta do is take this little white insert deal and uh, stick it in like this basically from the bottom Up, like that and then it tells you right there what side it is so this is left hand side aka driver's side so with it like this we can go ahead and take it to your bumper and basically just push it on you guys even see anything sorry but yeah just push it on and it'll clip on and then it'll be basically the reverse just go ahead and install your hardware and uh you're good okay guys we got our new fog lights in and they look freaking fantastic another part that all of you guys have been waiting for and that is how do i wire them up that is actually that is actually super super easy and here's the way that i do it i buy a pre-made harness and by the way, I'll kind of explain a little bit later, but all I end up using is 
stressed the uh, pigtails. Um, I basically cut it right here off the relay and I use all of this. Now, if you guys don't want to, for whatever reason, if you don't plan on installing a lot of lights and stuff like that and don't want to spend the money on one of these, you can just buy the har this harness, install it using the uh, relays, run all of these wires to your cab and use this uh, button and that will work your fog lights. That's the way that I had it for the longest time on the uh, single cab before I switched to the Oxybeam um, fuse panel relay, relay box or whatever. Again, super easy, super cheap. And actually the, the reason why I don't buy just the pigtails and make my own harness is because buying this harness, believe it or not, is cheaper than buying just the pigtails. Um, or at least I couldn't find the pigtails cheaper than this whole harness. So I'll link the harness down below. Um, and like I said, if you wanna just install your bumper and your fog lights, this is an awesome harness to buy and just run it like that. But if you're doing the Oxybeam um, headlights, I would still recommend to buy the harness and then just cut the um, cut the harness off right there, and then just splice in your own wires to go to the um, the relay box. So I'm gonna go ahead get the fog lights wired up so we can finish out the uh, video. So I'll be back real quick. Okay, guys, success. We've got the whole project completely finished, and I'm gonna walk you through it right now. Uh, but first, check out these freaking fog lights. They look beautiful. Now I still gotta aim them. I feel like they're still pretty down low because if you find like the proper angle to them they're actually pretty bright um, but of course we'll take them on a, on a test drive tonight uh, I might aim on myself a little bit uh, that little screw in the back that's how you aim them so if they're, if they're too low or too high you turn them one way or the other way and it'll um, adjust them but anyways I love the way they look I absolutely love them now, as far as the harness like I said I plugged them into their plugs I cut and splice right here two wires then we came to the unit came to the uh, 30 plus 30 amp um, fuse spot and then did my negative and my positive so that's all plugged in on the actual control unit you've got your your positive coming from your battery to your relay um, I still got to properly mount this and the way that I'm thinking about doing it is basically mounting it to the to this um, support for the battery tray making a little bracket that comes up for this and then holds this i think that'll look pretty cool uh so it goes to the power and then the ground goes from there down to all these wires and then to this ground right here and then this is your auxiliary so this goes here down into the same loom that this harness goes to oh, i gotta fix that it goes over your firewall i still gotta fix that and then into your fuse block, fuse panel. And we just got a uh, wire tap right here. You do have to modify the fuse box a little bit so that the uh, your wire actually sits in there and doesn't get cut. And then you gotta bend these out of the way a little bit so that the lid uh, closes. But that's working, it's looking, looking good. And then again, uh, we go through the firewall with that harness up the A pillar uh, through the headliner and then into the extra control panel. And it looks freaking amazing. And again, I freaking love that I painted that thing black. I just think it completely ties everything together and looks super nice, super sleek. Definitely way better than these uh, switches. And again, like I said, right now, I don't have a lot of use for all of these buttons, but in the future, I actually want to deck out this truck with a whole bunch of lights and stuff like that. So we'll have plenty of spots to do this and it'll be super easy to wire this. Again, I freaking love this uh, these systems. It has actually made me like wiring. It has actually made me like wiring. And if you've been with the channel for a while, you know that I hate wiring and I hated wiring, but doing it kind of like this, I actually really enjoyed this project. It was actually kind of fun. Um, but yeah, again, super, super happy with it. And uh, once it gets a little bit darker, we're gonna drive and I'll show you how those uh, fog lights work, how bright they are, or how bright they're not. Anyway, super happy with it. And like I said, I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit.